Welcome to Lecture 4 for CED 405, Spiritual Formations. Today's lecture is going to be on the topic of Bible study. As with any healthy relationship, communication must flow from both parties involved. This is the same with our relationship with God. While prayer is a believer talking to God, reading and studying the Bible allows God to talk to the believer. The purpose of this lesson will be to examine the purpose of Bible study theologically and then discuss how to practically study God's Word. Let's begin by answering some theological questions concerning Bible study. The first one is, why should we study the Bible? Well, according to Psalm 119 verse 105, God's Word can give us direction. The psalmist said, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. While a flashlight or a lamp in this context helps us see through the physical darkness, the scriptures help us see through spiritual darkness that is all around us. And secondly, God's word can provide a means of protection from sin. Staying in Psalm 119, verse 11 says, Your word I have hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against you. According to this passage, not only do the scriptures help us see through the spiritual darkness, they also have the power to keep us from sin when we treasure them with all our heart. And thirdly and lastly, God's word can be profitable to our spiritual formation. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, Paul said, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Paul was telling Timothy, that the scriptures are so profitable that they can be used for teaching, for conviction, for improvement of our character, and for the education in righteousness so that we can be a complete servant of God. So now that we've discussed why we should study the Bible, let's answer the question, how should we study the Bible? In order to discuss studying the Bible, we must talk about what's called hermeneutics. Now, hermeneutics is the science and art of interpretation. As a science, this means that it makes observations. And as an art, it skillfully applies those observations through the text. Based on those hermeneutical observations, the following principles should be applied anytime God's Word is being studied. The first one is interpret a passage by utilizing its context. The word context is Latin. Con means together and text means woven. Therefore, interpreting in light of the context means woven together. An example of this can be seen in Psalm 14 verse 1. If you just took the phrase, there is no God, but did not explain the rest of that verse, that would not be utilizing the context. Because while it does say in Psalm 14:1, there is no God, the context is, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. And then letter B, interpret a passage by utilizing other scripture. The Bible is the best interpreter of itself. An example of this can be seen during Jesus' arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane. Matthew 26 says that a disciple cut off a high priest servant's ear. Well, if you look at other scripture, John 18 tells us the disciple was Peter and the high priest servant was Malchus. Not only should we interpret a passage by utilizing the context and other scripture, but we should also utilize grammatical considerations. The first grammatical consideration is the construction of a passage. This means using the syntax or arrangement of words and phrases in a passage 
to reveal its own meaning in the passage. An example of this can be seen in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. In Ephesians 2, 8, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Now, many individuals have said that the word gift is the word faith. For by grace are you saved through faith, and the faith is the gift. The problem with this interpretation is that the syntax of the Greek does not support this. The words faith and gift are not in the same gender. Therefore, they cannot modify each other. Secondly, consider the word meanings of a passage. Words are the building blocks of a sentence. A way that we can see this being utilized in the Bible is in John 14, verse 2. Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. Because of the word mansion and what it meant in the 1600s, many individuals have erroneously believed that that word means gigantic houses. In the Greek, the word translated mansions just means rooms. Therefore, in my Father's house are many rooms. Letter D. In addition to the context, other scripture, and grammatical considerations, we need to interpret a passage by utilizing its historical background. This means using a text's historical setting to help determine various meanings in a passage. An example of this can be seen in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 26. Here in this verse, Paul says to greet one another with a holy kiss. This is not a command for us to go around and kiss each other. This was the common cordial greeting between a male and a male, or a female and a female, during that time. Today, Paul would be telling us to make sure when we see each other, we give each other a cordial greeting, like a handshake or a fist bump, whatever would be appropriate for that situation. And then finally, letter E. We should interpret a passage by utilizing its genre. This would be using a text style of writing to help determine its meaning. Examples of this can be seen all through the book of Proverbs because of its genre. Solomon starts off writing this book to his son, explaining that he is giving him wise sayings. These are not commands. We can see this in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Solomon said, Where there is no guidance, the people fall. But in abundance of counselors, there is victory. Solomon is not promising that every time you seek advice, it will always work out for good. I believe we all could admit that there are times in the past when we've made decisions based off of other individuals' advice that did not turn out well. And we've also made decisions without seeking the counsel of others, and they turned out well, too. Solomon is giving his son wise advice to say, the best thing to do before making decisions is to seek the advice of others. Another example of this can be seen in Proverbs 22, verse 6. This extremely popular verse says, Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. How many individuals have brought up their children in church, and then when they got older, they went away from the Lord? This has caused many people to not fully understand what this verse is saying. Again, just like Proverbs 11, the wise saying is, If you want a better future for your children, train them up in the way they should go. But children have free will. They cannot be forced to do right. Solomon, ironically, was writing a son who would rebel against the word of God, even though he was trained up in the way he should go. The reason for this is because the genre, again, of the book of Proverbs are wise sayings and not commands. 
Now that we've answered the theological questions concerning Bible study, let's move on to Roman Rule 2, Practical Advice for Bible Study. Letter A, set aside time to study the Bible. And I would also encourage you to make sure wherever you are studying the Bible, it is in a place that has very limited distractions. Then letter B, plan where you are going to start studying the Bible. Where you decide to study the Bible is just as important as when you decide to study it. Now, for newer Christians, I always encourage them to begin in the Gospels, and specifically in the book of John. But if you are not a new believer, then I would just encourage you to plan which book or books you would like to study. I've always been told, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Then letter C. Ask God to reveal to you what he wants you to learn. Do not forget, studying the Word of God is our way to hear from the Lord. So before we even begin reading his scriptures, we need to go to him in prayer, asking him to show us something from his Word that would help us be more like his Son. Then letter D. Study with an expectation to hear from God. We don't need to just ask God to reveal what he wants us to learn from the scriptures. We need to expect God to answer that prayer. Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us that when we come to God, we must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That is a definition of faith. So when you and I begin studying the scriptures... We need to have the faith that God is going to speak to us through his word. And then letter E. It's really helpful if you have a good study Bible. And when you're using a study Bible, use the cross references and the footnotes in order to help determine other applicable passages and word uses. And then secondly, Read their commentaries, but use them only as a guide. Remember, the words of the Bible are God-breathed, but the words of the commentators are words of man, so they may be able to give us great advice, wisdom, and insight, but we should never take the words of a human as the words of God. Then letter F, utilize a Hebrew or Greek lexicon in order to better understand the meaning of some words or phrases. Now, you could obviously use one of the hardback lexicon that you could even find in our library, or you could go to a website like blueletterbible.org. As you see on the screen, if you go to that website and click on any verse, it will give you a number of valuable resources. You can have the interlinearity where you get the Greek and Hebrew numbers and what words they are and what they mean. You could then explore other Bibles, cross-references to other passages, various commentaries, dictionaries, and even other miscellaneous information. Then, after you have looked at the lexicon to understand a passage's words and phrases even better, remember to take notes of what you have learned in a journal. This can be done on an actual journal or even on your phone or another electronic device. Taking notes on a journal is extremely helpful because in the future you will have something to go back and look at in order to refresh your memory about those passages. And then finally, letter H. Share what God has taught you with others. This is the absolute best way for you to remember what you studied and of course, this makes the information beneficial to even those who are around you. That brings us to the end of Lecture 6 for CED 405 Spiritual Formations.